Jesus overturned the law, then I guess adultery is okay. If Jesus overturned the law, then I guess idolatry is okay. If Jesus overturned the law, then I guess stealing is okay. I guess murder is okay. No, f- let me repeat, he did not come to overturn or abolish the law, but to bring it to fulfillment. As for animal sacrifices, the fact is those were pointing towards something, and he brought it to fulfillment by dying on the cross and taking the place of the animal sacrifices. But I ask you a question. Did he take the place of the morality, the ethic of the Old Testament? Do we now get rid of justice? Do we now get rid of righteousness? Do we now get rid of care for the poor and the hurting and the needy? Those things are all part of the law. Jesus took the moral and ethical requirements of the law and the sexual purity of the law and brought it to a higher standard. So the law said don't commit adultery. Jesus said if you have lustful thoughts in your heart towards another woman, then you have committed adultery in your heart. He took things to a higher standard. And he died because our sin was so destructive and grievous. Our sin is ultimately going to hurt us in homosexual practice practice, according to the Bible, according to Moses, Jesus, Paul, according to the whole Bible, is destructive, harmful, contrary to God's best. Jesus died even to save people from that. What does it mean to be under grace? To be under grace means that we have the power to do what God requires. What it says in Romans, the sixth chapter is you're not under the law, but under grace. Therefore, you now have the power to overcome sin. You say, well, what if I fall short? I fall short, you fall short, it's true. Every one of us falls short, but if we willfully practice sin and seek to justify it, we cut ourselves off from God's grace. It says in Hebrews 12, be careful that you don't fall into sexual immorality and so forfeit God's grace. We can refuse it and scorn it. If I say, I I don't sin, man, I'm saved, I don't sin, there's nothing wrong in my life, I'm a hypocrite, I'm a liar, I'm self-deceived. If I say I recognize I fall short, but by God's grace, I turn away from that and I move forward, I can receive mercy and forgiveness. If we confess our sins, which means we acknowledge them, we lay them down, then God will cleanse us and wash us. If we say, hey, Jesus died for me, I can keep on sinning, now we've deceived ourselves. First, you are created in the image of God, the same as I was. Heterosexual and homosexual are created in the image of God. We are human beings. We are equally loved by God. God does not love heterosexuals more than homosexuals. However, we are part of a fallen human race, a flawed human race. Every one of us falls short. According to the Bible, by our very nature, we were objects of God's judgment. However, there is no biblical evidence that someone is born gay. There is no scientific evidence of any conclusive nature, no sociological evidence of any conclusive nature that people are born gay. I can give you quote after quote from gay activists talking about one day they'll find a gay gene. One day they'll prove that we're born gay. In other words, it hasn't been proven yet. But I say this, even if it was true that you're born gay, I don't believe that, I don't accept it, but even if it was true that you were born gay, Jesus can still change you. Again, by our very nature, we're fallen people. By our very nature, greed comes naturally. Anger comes naturally. Lust comes naturally. It varies from person to person. For some, all types of heterosexual promiscuity comes naturally. For someone else, homosexual practice comes naturally. Jesus dies to transform us from the inside out. We literally become new creations. And the fact is, as much as people try to deny it, there are many, many people. I know some of them personally. I've known them for years who literally are former homosexuals. Not just suppressed, but I'm talking about they used to be attracted to the same sex, they are now attracted to the opposite sex, and they are living healthy whole lives. Jesus can do that. And I I wonder, would you say, Jesus can't do that? Would you say, God blessed me with my homosexuality, when that means that the most fundamental blessing given to the human race, not only the ability to reproduce is withholding from you? Is it a blessing that you and your partner, no matter how much you care about each other, cannot come together in, in union and reproduce the unique offspring of who you are? That's, that's not a blessing. That's something missing. Jesus can bring true wholeness in life that reproduces in a thousand different areas. Well, God's your judge, not me. That's the first thing. I would warn you, though, and say that you cannot base things on your experience alone. Let me give you an example. There was one couple that was in the midst of divorce. Each one was divorcing their spouse, and they were about to be 
married to each other. And when someone questioned them on that, they said, no, before we have sex, now remember, they're married people, before we have sex with each other, in other words, committing adultery, we pray and we really feel the Lord's presence. It says in the word, don't deceive yourself. Praying a little prayer was never what Jesus required. Submitting to him as Lord and putting our faith in him to save us, that's what he required. I remind you, he didn't die to save us in our sins, but from our sins. We have to confess him as Lord, meaning he's the boss, he's the master, and we now submit to his ways. And according to the universal testimony of Scripture, homosexual practice is forbidden. No, a homosexual man or woman is not an abominable person in God's sight any more than any other human being. We are fallen people loved by God that Jesus died for. But there are certain practices that are absolutely forbidden. And if you say, look, I love Jesus. I'm struggling with same-sex desires. I'm not a practicing homosexual. I know this is wrong and I'm struggling. Hey, we're praying for you, believing with you, and I don't doubt your profession of faith. I don't doubt your commitment to the Lord because you're struggling. People struggle in many areas. If you say, I am a practicing homosexual, a self-identified gay or lesbian, practicing this lifestyle, following Jesus at the same time, I say, no, according to the scriptures, the two are mutually incompatible. 